checkers. I wanna play checkers. Intermediate. Wait, rules. Pieces on move diagonally. Catch up on pieces by jumping over them. Capture moves are mandatory. If capturing moves is, is possible, of taking the opponent to play and keep capturing. Only move forward. Reaches the point becomes a king. A king can move forward and backward. Thank you. Classic rules. No, you play first. I'll bet 10 till I get to know you better. I haven't played intense checkers in a while. This one moves, it's dead. I can move this one. Actually, it's gonna capture mine, so... This one. Keep moving. Uh. I think we're gonna get stuck at one point. I am grateful for the contest. Okay. Oh, we messed up. Ooh, lots of work has been done here. Come as a turn to Homestead. The hard way. Sail to Martha's Vineyard to equip the Aquila with cannon. Officers must also be hired to command the new guns. Let's go, naval mission. Come aboard and feast your eyes, boy. No, 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 not the left foot. Never the left foot. Horrible look. Step with your right foot first. <laughs> Marinos. She is... Solid? Aye. Weatherly and sleek. She'll fetch twelve knots in a stiff gale, near a ship from here to Singapore can outrun her on her best day. What do you say we take her out and show you what she can do first hand? I would love to. Where would we go? As it happens, she still needs guns and the officers to command them. We'll launch straight away. <laughs> Don't worry, lad. I'll make sure you sprout good sea legs. All in the mainsail! Get up the rigging! And over fist! Come on, men! Let's get her out where she needs to be! Economy. Come on, lad! No time like the present! 1773. Double 
double time, boy. It's time you learnt. Take the wheel. Are you sure you want me to do that? Take the helm. Naval ships. You probably don't know much about 18th century naval warfare because you don't know much about anything at all, so here's a rundown of some of the types of vessels you're likely to encounter. Frigates. Long, relatively light vessels with a lot of guns, more than 28. You want to get technical about it. Frigates were light and easily maneuverable, so they were often used for reconnaissance or escorting merchant vessels. Frigate is also a terrific word to use if you want to swear what your mother-in-law is nearby. Ah, uh, frigate. Gunboats. These were smaller vessels, gener generally containing only one gun, but it was a really big gun. The gun in the boat is where the term gunboat gets the word gun from. Okay. It's not known why the word boat is there. Gunboats were relatively inexpensive to build and could be assembled quickly, and they were most often used to bombard targets on land. Although gunboats can easily be destroyed by a larger ship, such as a frigate, several gunboats together would do some serious damage before a larger ship could destroy them all. Something in numbers and guns, of course. Mostly guns. Schooner. Sco but, uh, more likely, schooner. Schooners are small light craft noted for their speed. These were the preferred ships for privateers during the American Revolution. There was nothing better for breaking through enemy lines faster than you can get shot at or, is, or for making a fast getaway. Nowadays, of course, we have chess keys. Man of War. This isn't really a naval classification, but more of a catch all term for a warship carrying a lot of cannon. Most of the Man of Wars you'll see will likely be ships of the line, which are essentially big ships with multiple gun decks stacked on one another. Basically, naval warfare consisted of lining up your ships broadside against the enemy's ships in order to hit them with the most cannonballs possible. Of course, the enemy would be trying to do the same thing. Predictably, the biggest ships with the most guns usually won, leading to the building of more ships with even bigger guns. It wasn't sophisticated, but by God, it worked. Clan system, uh, matrilineal society, transferring identity through the mother's lineage. Extended family is called a clan. Uh, three clans, turtle, wolf, and bear. Family names of clans are passed down from mother to child. Each member is a relative regardless of which nation they belong to. Wolf clan member and wolf clan member are considered relatives. Likewise, the men and women practice exo exogamy, marrying outside the matrilineal clan family. Clans have specific so so social, spiritual, and political roles, and is the pillar of tradition and blah blah blah. Within the clans, all leadership members hold e equal powers. A woman leader or clan mother holds a powerful leadership role. Uh, or select a chief, represent the clan politically. She also has the power to depose a chief. And knows who is a good fit. The clan mothers choose men who are honest, reliable, and clear headed, with the knowledge of the great law of peace. Among um, nations, there are eight clans, and so there's three clans. Okay. Come on, come on, she won't bite. Are you sure I'm good for it? You're connected to her now. Listen. Half sail. Do not take any time. Ah! The killer flies again. Do you feel it, lad? Set a course for Martha's Vineyard. We'll find our guns and officers there. She's a nimble vessel, but the faster she goes, the more cumbersome she grows. And the firmer your hand needs to be. Enjoy this stretch of open water, for we come upon those shallows. Call for full sail, if you like. Uh... Full sail? Whee! Wind looks to be shifting. Stay alert, Connor. Gusty winds can be difficult to manage. Lower the sails and counter the wind. Now, take us through these shallows. 
Careful not to run up on them. The sandbars will slow us down, but the rocks will put a hole through a hole. And if you want to make a quick tack, call for half sail. She's more maneuverable then. Gotcha. Build them off as many of them. Yeah, I don't want to run into those ships. We need more speed. Mind those other vessels! Hold your tack to keep your right of way! What is tack? Cool. Oh, so that's the green thing is the wind. Gotcha. Um, okay, rogue wind. Flags are there to tell me where the wind is going. Well, those vineyards. Okay, look at the pier. Cottages. We're close. Let me see where I'm going. Yay. We'll go ashore, buy our guns, and find our officers. Oh, hello, Miss Mandy. You're looking every bit as ravishing as I remember. <laughs> After all these years, you sail all the way to the vineyard to pay me compliments. We are looking for David and Richard Clutterbuck. <laughs> nice to see you too. Robert Faulkner, where the hell you been? Sorry for leaving like I did, lads, but where I was going, no one could know. You two working much? No, between contracts at the moment. Well, we're looking for gunnery officers. What would you two say to working with me again? We'd be for getting into a few more scraps. <laughs> Good show. The Aquila is a fine vessel. We're fitting all the guns as we speak. Looks like your friend's about to catch a beating. Where is Charles Lee? I don't much care if we were told. Why? This church. Hey, you don't want to be doing that, Biddle. Bobby Faulkner turned to wet nursing. <laughs> Could you finally realize you're a shite sailor? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not in here, gentlemen. Better still, not at all. Bobby, take your friends and get out! Let's go, boys. Our guns ought to be ready. Come on. But it's Benjamin Church. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Lots of guns there. Ooh, minigun. David and Richard Klatterbach. Gunners in the Merchant Navy, starting in the mid 18th century. Those two were the first to find the fist fight. Or pretty much anything, so if you're talking to them, try not to mix up their names. David is the older brother, Richard is the younger, and definitely don't try to be funny with the surname. The Clutterbucks were a Dutch family. Moved to London when David and Richard were young. The father was a dock worker. Two brothers grew up near and in dockyards. 
running errands, and have master cash, extraordinarily aptitude or affinity, if you will, for fighting. Joined the crew with Robert Faulkner on board the Stalwart in 1750, working with him until he disappeared in 1753. Unlike many go to sea in search of adventure, the Clutterbuck's motivation was somewhat different. Guns. Uh, the overall gun are talking about the power of his cannon that decided the sailor's life was for them. The sailor was not, in fact, talking about an actual cannon, but the impressionable lads missed it. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm saying he was talking about another type of cannon, different weapon altogether. I'm saying he was his his cannon had power, I'm using speech marks to make it obvious. He had a powerful weapon, he wielded an enormous penis. Still don't get it? Oh well. The Clutterbox spent years traveling on various merchant and private vessels, almost always hiring an honor as a pair, eventually settled in Martha's Vineyard. Uh, rest between contracts, and then we got tired uh, and hired onto a new crew. I'll explain the joke again later. Amanda Bailey, well known, well liked innkeeper, born in 1733 in North Carolina, oldest, mother died when she was 14. She worked to help care for her younger brothers. First cross path with Faulkner when she was a teenager, working for the United Company of Merchants, barmaid. Recipe for romance. They exchanged letters, which was the texting of the day. Uh, stuff from Faulkner disappeared. Sad face. Despite the thoughts that the Faulkner had fallen overboard and dead, Amanda felt that he was still alive somewhere. After several years, she went in search. Uh, she never found Faulkner and eventually settled in Martha's Vineyard, taking a job in the local inn, which she later purchased. Amanda had a born talent for leadership and organization, responsible for setting up the first school. Not to mention advocating improvements to the docks and bringing more business. So in was a hub for gossip, particularly for one of the sheep movements. Probably comes as no surprise that she was a spy for the Patriots. Only been publicly known since 1919 when a box of her personal correspondence was found, including some coded notes in Benjamin Talmadge's handwriting. Why the hell am I driving this? I'm freaking 18 years old. What the bloody hell was that about? The older man is a Templar. Who was he with? A Templar? The young pup was Nicholas Biddle. Nobody. Sails before the mast. Midshipman for the Crown. Are the guns ready? Aye, but we won't jump in over our heads. We'll find a suitable target and show you how they work. We fitted her with a modest amount of guns to start, but rest assured there's ample room to add more should you feel the need. Good. Sail to the shipwreck. Looks like a British frigate with half seas over. Should do nicely for a spotted target practice. Bring around broadside, and when all guns are on target, call fire. Fire at the rear wreck. Round the rear for a start. For the wreck. Hold and release to fire the cannon. Line the camera with the other side. They kill it to fire well the cannon. Well done, boy. Now, aim all guns at her bow and do as much damage as possible. Cool. Good. Now give the swivel guns a turn. More precise. Hit those old powder barrels and light up the sky. Why not capture them? Fast learner. Provided something interests me. Ah. Getting a taste for the open sea, are we? We'll make a jack tar out of you yet. Now we should be getting back. The old man is like to have my hide for keeping you out so long. Let's go.
Hopefully Brace won't attack, use the swivel gun to destroy shit. Why is he shooting at us? Destroying property of the crown, disturbing the king's peace, take your pick! What do we do? No else uh. but to fight back! Sink the bastard! Use the shrivels on him, Captain! The hell was that? Oh, that's Brace. Chain shot. Okay. That's what I meant. Turn, turn, turn. Big swattled another one. Where in the bloody hell did she come from? Oh boy. Getting back or the old man will have my guts for garters. Yeah, not bad for the first time out. That's the tradition painting. New email. I got them! All of them! 
You get what I need, and I'll give them to you. Simple. You got a ship, could find them all to boot. Who is that man? Him? Some old salt always on about letters he's got from Captain Kidd. Nonsense, really, but he doesn't hurt no one, so I'll leave him be. Talk to him if you fancy, but be warned he'll chew your ear off. Anyway, the Aquila's here for you. If you should get a pang for the open sea, we'll be waiting. Now, I implore you to head up the hill before the old man comes out of retirement just for me. <laughs> what? We're going to get cannons. You just got a bit way late. Weeks. And not even a goodbye before you left. What? Three weeks. Sorry. Well, what are you waiting for? Time moves quickly in this game. Can I get the outfit now? Put them on. Thank you. Once upon a time, we had a ceremony on such occasions. But I don't think either of us are really the type for that. You've your tools and training. Your targets and goals. And now you have your title. Apprentice Assassin? Welcome to the Brotherhood, Connor. Junior Assassin? And we sync sequence 5 complete. Welcome back, Desmond. You'll be happy to hear there's actually good news for once. Yeah? I've managed to locate a power source, and it's relatively close by. Up for a trip to Manhattan? Is it safe to leave? Abstergo's gotta be looking for us. Obviously it's not safe. Can't exactly sit around here hoping to get lucky, though, can we? We need that power source. Besides, I'm sure you can cook up some way to hide our movements. Maybe. The Templars have access to all kinds of satellites and camera systems. We'll need to find a way to mask our digital signature. I can probably camouflage the van, too. But there's not much I can do for us. That's an easy one. <laughs> you fire a flintlock pistol. Local utility companies have assured the public that they're completely prepared for the upcoming solar maximum. Disruptions to service are expected to be minimal. If only they knew. Mm -hmm. What's this? A remote operated camera. It'll provide us with a feed while you're on mission. This will let us talk to each other. We're almost there, so listen up. The artifact is in an office penthouse in Lower Manhattan. At this time of night, direct infiltration is going to get you noticed. I think we're better off having you drop in from above. What do you mean, above? Oh, shoot. You know how to use that, don't you? Have you ever base jumped before? Testing, one, two, three. Yep, read you just fine. Now why don't you power up the camera? I've got pictures, running diagnostics. Picture is horrible. Perfect, I've got a nice strong signal. Okay, just gonna follow the road.
Seriously, Sean? Fuck you. Lovely. Where's the target? Where's my goal? What? I'm not supposed to base jump from here? Just a heads up. There's no elevator access from here on out. You'll have to get up there the old fashioned way. Uh huh. This is ridiculous. Imagine just missing that jump. Jesus. Look on the bright side. No security to worry about. Right. Also, Brian side, the slightest misstep means you're effectively at the paste. Shut up, Sean. This is ridiculous. Almost there, Desmond. Once you reach the top of the lit up crane, you should be high enough to make the jump. Should? It'll be fine, don't worry. Well, you might want to worry a little. I'm pretty sure she was high when she was running the numbers. Sean! A <laughs> joke! It was a joke! Or was it? And I'm sure you tested it and you've all base jumped before, so this should be easy, right? Jump when you're ready, but wait for my signal to open the chute. Timing's really important here. Too soon or too late and you'll miss the building. Okay. Now, open your chute. You think I'm aiming for the landing pad? <coughs> Keep the chute, you might need the spare. Don't lose the sh don't lose the parachute. A great way to get out. Why are they always idiots? You just take the thing you want, put it in your bag, and jump off the building. That wasn't so bad. So, you must be Desmond. Not exactly what I expected, but I guess your kind doesn't have many options these days. Who are you? Ask your father. Now give me that. I don't think so. Look, I'm not supposed to kill you, but the boss man didn't say anything about fucking you up. So you've got to the count. Oh! Yeah, don't get close when you're holding a gun. So who the hell is Daniel Cross? Believe it or not, he used to be an assassin. The assassin, the way I've heard it told, but it 
found out he was a sleeper agent for Abstergo, programmed to infiltrate and destroy the organization. How did he know you were there? We could be compromised. They must have caught me snooping inside their network and sent Cross to see what we were after. If they were aware of our current location, we'd know. Though, I will say this. It doesn't bode very well for future expeditions. Yeah. I've set up some cameras topside. If anyone shows up, we'll see it. I'd suggest you go see about finding a socket for that power source. Or we can return to Connor if you prefer. All the artifacts in the world won't mean a thing without the key. Let me look around. First of all, I'm thinking over here. No, no place to socket it. This isn't very big. What you got for me? Ugh, Sean is really getting on my nerves. You'd think with everything that's going on, the guy would stop being such a douche. Maybe he thinks it's funny, or, or maybe it's part of his snarky British charm, or maybe it's how he deals with the stress. Whatever it is, it's getting old real fast. We've got enough to worry about, you know, end of the world and everything. You'd think he'd show a little restraint or maturity or something. Sorry, not like you need to hear me venting. You've got enough on your plate. Please don't say anything to him, though. In case you haven't noticed, we are knee-deep in this sh shirt here. I understand this might not be your idea of a good time. It isn't anyone's idea of a good time. Actually, it's fun sometimes. Picking fights isn't going to get our walk finished any faster, so I suggest you stick to the mission. The sooner we are through the door, the sooner we can get back to our lives, or in your case, the lack of one. William... William's not the most diplomatic man, I'll give you that, but he cares about you very much. When you were under, during the whole bit with 16, you never left your side, even slept in the same room when we put down for the night. Anyway, don't mean to be a busybody, you just didn't want you to stay so with him, not too so. Anyway, the man means well, even if he's got an odd way of showing it. Just a quick heads up that I've pushed a new bunch of injuries focused on the Kanek care in order to ensure accuracy, I actually turn to a friend on the outside. Don't worry, he thinks it's for a presentation, so we're in no danger of being discovered. You'll find a new section under the database label, surprise, surprise, Kanyak Car. It has information on the political and social structures, as well as some notes about the material culture. Interesting. The sphere used by Connor during his spirit journey is cleanly, clearly first civilization in origin. It appears to function as some sort of temporal calculator. It's essentially a crystal ball, but one that actually works. This can't be coincidental, which begs the question, are there others out there? Probably. Um, hello. It works, I should hardly be surprised. Okay. Electrical impulses move from one pathway to another. You call them networks. Our world for them was more akin to a road. It is yet difficult to project a thought from one medium to another, and yet it works. It works, it works, it works. I've been doing some digging on Haytham's blades. Still not 100% sure where they came from. My initial instinct was he started out as an assassin. I believe his father was one, in fact. But it appears that he was a Templar from pretty early on. Maybe he took them from someone. It's happened before, and they're quite handy. I'm surprised more Templars haven't put them up to use. Pretty easy to build a pair if you know what you're doing. Probably his father was a Templar, and his father uh, 
abandoned him or lost or died and he found them and was raised by Templars. I found a way to better control the impulses to formulate a thought and transmit it to add a sense of structure, a sense of order you fear, order your kind, the gentle hand tends the flock, it is kindness not a cruelty, I wonder will you ever understand your enemies to do enemies do in their own way, but they share your base heritage, their concept is flawed, they are not worthy, you have all proved unworthy of our gifts. Looks like Juno's really taking a shine to you, I suggest you don't engage her, there isn't time to go down that rabbit hole. It's sure to prove the badger's den, besides this whole experience is actually. Uh, the final door of salvation, was it? But for us, who knows? Here we sit, walking towards something we know next to nothing about, but it's our only chance, so there's that, I suppose. Lol, somebody doesn't like me. You should not meddle in affairs that do not concern you. <laughs> well, these Juno visits and emails too, apparently, have got me thinking. What happened to Tinia and Minerva? They're the ones who invited us to this little apocalypse party, and now they've gone and buggered off. A little inconvenient, not to mention rude. I'll try and poke around later. If there's not some sign of what happened to them. Ah, uh, frigate. Let's do this. Good luck, Desmond. These are troubled times. The already uneasy alliance between the Crown and its subjects frays. And behind them both, the Templars plot, pulling strings and moving pieces. History dictates they seek order through control. But how will they affect it here? Who supports them? And what conspiracies have Come they already up. spun? Spare All a moment. These things I must determine. Of course. For only Have a by look. knowing my enemy can I hope to stop. What him. is it? Xing Bao, or rope dart, if you prefer. One of the many plans given to us by Xiao Yun to. <sighs> Sorry. We'll have to work on this. <laughs> Yes, my friend. What brings Ooh. you here? Is the village all right? For now. What do you mean? What has happened? Men came, claiming we had to leave. They said that the land was being sold and that the Confederacy had consented. We sent an envoy, but they would not listen. You must refuse. We cannot oppose the Satcham, but you're right as well. We cannot give up our home. Do you have a name? Do you know who is responsible? He is called William Johnson. Uh -huh. Where is Johnson now? In Boston, making preparations for the sale. Sale? This is theft! Connor, take care. These men are powerful. What would you have me do? I made a promise to my people. If you insist upon this course of action, seek out Sam Adams in Boston. He'll be able to help. What have you done? When my people go to war, a hatchet is buried into a post to signify its start. When the threat is ended, the hatchet is removed. Uh, you could have used a tree. Yeah, not the pole supporting the house. Meet with peg leg in the homestead about kids' treasure. Finally, I have a I have a festival here. Okay, this is close. Homestead mission. Yeah, why did you do it in the post? New recipe bait. First of all, ledger. Ledger? Ledger? Ledger. Trading. No, it's not unsettled in the homestead. The crafting section is unlocked. Open the crafting section. Barrels. Craft barrels. I've used crafting and traded using convoy. Craft two barrels because you have two awkward lumbers. Maximum amount. Now we have barrels. Recipes can be collected throughout the world. Okay. 
stockpile trading charcoal give me charcoal oak bark Okay. Oak lumber. Flower. Consumables. Arrows. Missing resources. Bait. Land convoy. Capacity upgrade. Land convoy. Twin holsters. Needs rosewood and a tailor. Materials, barrels, weapon handles. This is very too much, too, too intricate. Three available recipes. Clothing, food, education, metal walk, convoy, resource, charcoal to Boston. Oak bark. More time, more risk. Yes, and more charcoal. Send the convoy. Thirty four profit, really, that's it. It has occurred to me that the times we live in will be looked upon by future generations with a certain degree of scrutiny, no matter the outcome. With that in mind, I think it valuable to record the goings-on around the homestead, a true log of how people lived during this time of transition, something to help color the portrait. What do you think? I think I need to go. When I find a moment, I will try. Very good. I actually need to go. Flintlock pistol. Poison darts. Trip mine. That's a whole heck of a lot of tools for no freaking Inventory space. Uh, fine, use that for now. I want to talk about the peg leg. Oh, I have to go. To what do I owe this great honor, Captain? The letters you speak of, what are they? Oh, now you want to know. Captain Kidd's letters, boy. He hid a great treasure somewheres and sent letters to four of his crewmen along with a strange piece of leather. If you find the men, you'll find the scallywag. It's that easy, tis. May I see them? <laughs> you might be a cotton, but you're not too bright, are you? I'll barter with them. You give me some trinkets I like, and I'll give you a letter. 
Building me own treasure cache, see? Trinkets? Like what? Where? Use your imagination, Captain. There's interest and swag all over the frontier. Okay. Find one trinket, meet with Pegleg, go back and talk to Pegleg to exchange trinkets. What you got for me? Ah, you brought me some good pieces. That's worth a letter to be sure. Here you go, Captain. I will be back for the rest. Charleston outfit. Got some more? Let's have a look then. You adult boy? That's not near enough. Okay. What did you say about more naval mission? Right. Boston, the chase, Fort Walcott, Henderson in distress. St. Augustine. What the hell is all of this? I'll consider it for next time. This time I have to go. Eat shot. Grape shot. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay good. Have fun.